Hey guys, it's your boy Robo and today I'll be doing a video on my impressions of Tier 21 uh, for Feral Droid after playing with it for the last two days on the PTR. The build that I'll be talking about is the one on the 27th of October. So what is the Tier 21 bonus? The two set is that Rip has a 10% chance to tick again. That's what the tooltip says. It used to be 20%, uh, which is incredibly strong, but now it's been reduced to 10%. And the way it's calculated according to logs in this build is that both Rip and Ash remains Rip. Every time they do a tick, they can tick again and create a proc called Bloody Gash, which shows up on your logs. Now the Bloody Gash's damage is, the base damage is the damage from that tick, and then the body gash tick has a chance to crit. So if you have a rip tick for 100k um, in a prox body gash, the body gash could do 100k or it could crit and do 200k. And if that initial rip tick crit for 200k, the body gash's base damage would be 200k and it could crit for 400k. So that's how it works. And that extra chance to tick again, the bloody gash, is assumed to also work with the 4 tier 21 bonus. So the 4 tier 21 bonus, which I've paraphrased here, is that every time Rip ticks, it has a 4% chance to grant you a buff that lasts quite long, I think it's 30 seconds, we'll check later. And that makes you an extra ferocious bite, consume no energy and no combo points, but deal as if it had consumed 5 combo points. Now, uh, we're not sure if its current implementation is correct. It is a bit buggy. Uh, one of the things to note is that it requires at least one comp point to use the proc. So you can't just use it instantly when, uh, when you get it, if you've got no comp points. You also can't do any trickery like get the proc, you have five comp points, so you cast a rip, and then you cast a zero comp point for every spike, which sounds like something you would want to do. Can't do that. Another thing is that even though it deals damage as though it consumed five combo points, um, some of the interactions with other abilities don't count as five combo points. So predatory swiftness is based on the number of combo points you as a player had when you cast that ferocious fight with Apex Predator. It is not a guaranteed five combo point predatory swiftness. Same deal with Behemoth's headdress, your Tiger's Fury extend can be anywhere from 0.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds depending on how many combo points you as the player had when you push that ferocious bite. Solve the Arch Druid on the other hand, well the, it's, it comes down to the talent to solve the forest, correctly gives 25 energy even if you cast the ferocious bite, the free ferocious bite from Apex Predator with one combo point. Now what that means is for Moment of Clarity, you want to build to five combo points, cast the Ferocious Bite, followed by another Ferocious Bite. Because that will give you, when you're using Behemoths, it will give you 2.5 seconds plus another 2.5 seconds. Um, using Blood Talons on the other hand, it's, it's a different strategy, and I, I'll get to that. So I'll kick it off. So the first build I used um, was Blood Scent. Incarnation, uh, Savage Raw, and Moment of Clarity, which is a popular single target build at the moment online. Uh, this is running Behemoth's Headdress and Soul the Arch Druid, both of which have some good synergy with this set bonus because you have extra finishes. And, you're, and you, you have extra damage for your finishes, including Rip and Ferocious Bite. Alright. So. Let's actually just go back here. just doing okay so hang on a second right, let's just get rid of this so I obviously didn't set up before I started right, let's just pause okay, I can it here. all right uh, also, I'm pretty sure I didn't turn on my damage meter, which I flipped through later on. So as I was Break Savage Raw, Ashramane's Frenzy into TF, into the 
Got a few twinkle points into the rip. Now, if I get an Apex Predator in the Incarnation, you'll see me do a 5 coin point double throw to spot. I don't think I get any here, we'll just see what happens. Also, even though I have Shadow Meld, I don't use it because it breaks the damage log um, on PCR. So there's, as you can see there, I did two versions by in a row. The rip refresh is quite similar to previously in that you can probably, I'm sure Sims will give us a firm number later, but uh, you want to refresh it somewhere between zero and maybe around 13-ish seconds. What I do is, when Tag 3 is about to drop off, if I have a sub 15 second uh, rip, I'll refresh it. So actually there was some exciting stuff back there, which I'll just go to. Uh, I think this is a lucky, yeah this is pretty lucky. Alright, so if you just watch here what I do. Alright, so I've got 5 common points here. 5 common points. I'm going to use first spike because the pot comes up. And then I use first spike again. Because I have enough energy to get the rip up before the Tiger's Fury drops off. And actually I get up pretty fast. I, now I'm just pulling slowly for Pandemic. Then I get another proc. So the correct thing to do here would be to build 5 common points. Which I can do within the Tiger's Fury window. And then remember that you can't cast... Oh, remember that Tiger's Fury increases from Behemoths is based on how many common points you have as a player. So my next normal finisher, if I didn't have the proc, would be Savage Draw. So what I would do is I squeeze a Ferocious Bite in before the Savage Draw. It's pretty straightforward. So I use Ferocious Bite, Savage Draw. The buff lasts quite a long time. So you can see here I'm going to refresh rip before Tiger's Fury falls off. The Apex Predator buff lasts quite a while, so you can actually hold it when you're outside of TF and bring it into the Tiger's Fury. Which I may or may not do in this video, I'm not sure. There's a bit of lag on uh, P tower as well, so sometimes it does weird things. So with with the shorter timer on the with the tier twenty removal, there's actually you can't really feel that much difference because you still get the ferocious bites from the set bonus. So what I did there, okay, so you can see I have it, let's just go back a second. This is the pocket I don't use, sure. Alright. So last 25, 24, 25 seconds? That's, that's pretty long. It'll last, it'll last you into your Tiger's Fury, because Tiger's Fury always lasts a minimum of 8 seconds. If you get it at, after your Tiger's Fury falls off, you know, you, it'll carry over to the next Tiger's Fury. So my, my thinking here is, I've got five common points. I can use versus bite into rip, but given the typically low proc rate of this uh, uh, predator apex, I can cast rip, then build another five common points, and then when I get tiger's fury, I can extend tiger's fury instantly with a versus bite. So that's my thinking. I think that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. This. And actually, I overshred to get this in. So this is def definitely something that needs a bit of thinking um, on how much energy you have. Um, it's extra skill element that may or may not be reflected in the Sims later on. And depending on whether or not they 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 fix how um, the common points with uh, Apex Predator works. So as you can see here, I'm going to pop Tiger Sphere. I'm going to pop Ferocious Bite. Probably twice, and then I'm going to pop red. 
with that, I've just added five seconds to Tiger's Fury. And I, it's an extra 2.5 seconds that wouldn't have normally been there if I did the first fight earlier. And I also, you can see, saw my Apex Predator didn't refresh, so I didn't, I didn't waste the prop. So that's, a, that's an interesting thing. I think for this particular uh, finisher, I saw that I wasn't comfortable on whether I'd get another rip in. I get two finishes, I should say, before Tiger's Fury fell off. And this is where I actually fix the moves. So here, I just talked about holding combo points so you can extend Tiger's Fury, which is just a common thing you do with Behemoths. But I actually cleared it here because of the fact that I'm going to have both Tiger's Fury and Ash Mains. That's a common thing that happens at 2.30 if you, if you just use everything on cooldown, you're not saving anything. Alright, so... I don't think there's anything interesting to say, see here. Apart from the fact that the the goal is to make sure you have no energy when Ash Mains Frenzy falls off. Um, here I pulled 50 energy so I can cast first Bite. You don't want to cast first Bite with less than 50 energy if you can help it. And here I'm pulling because I want to refresh my rake with the Tiger's Fury. Which I don't get because PTR lag, but you can see th that would have been buffed. And here's another proc. So we think about how do we use this particular proc. Um, you can actually do the same thing as last time and save it. But my ink iron is coming off, so you probably want to you probably want a long rip inside the ink iron, so you don't have to deal with rip and savage draw refreshes inside. But we'll see what I do. Oh, so I use savage draw, so I don't have to cast savage draw inside. Ink on. Or uh, if I do have to cast it, I'll have to cast it once. And then I, I shred to zero energy because I'm going to pop both of these at the same time. Then I'm going to pop, cast the rip finisher. So then I'm going to cast possibly rake and actually just ignore the common points, followed by F first spot and rip. Okay, so I cast rip. Okay, actually, this is this is fine as well. So I cast the rip, then I cast a rake. I'm still not going to get a refresh here. It, it's such a low chance, I have, to, I have to emphasize, it's such a low chance at the moment on single target to get it. You can actually just save it for a ridiculous amount of time and you'll, you should be fine. So I've actually just saved it all the way up to here and then I'm going to use my double purchase by it. I think this is going to give me a fairly long Tiger's Fury. Oh, there's another prompt. I think everything so far has been okay. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm only going to do the main two specs I think are handy. Um, so my text really just there to last for the full 30 seconds, which is good. So now I'm just going to pull and then refresh it. But I actually hear the second clear casting somewhere. Oh, I got a double energy! I might have kept for a tiny bit there. So now I'm holding for this. I'm tolerating for the Ashman's Frenzy. Uh, you can definitely get all your rakes buffed by Tiger's Fury. Um, as I think you can see I'm doing in this video. It's actually decently okay. You can get most of it done. Sometimes you'll need a first spike prop to get you there. Yeah, so I was like, I definitely need to refresh this so I can refresh the raid. So it's, that's, that's pretty tight, as you can see. And th there were no procs there. They were just energy and color point management. And here I'm pretty sure I'm waiting for this uh, Tiger Fury rip. I could have also refreshed the rip a bit earlier. It wouldn't have made that much of a difference. And this, I think this is the last 20 seconds. I'm just closing it out. You can see that the sustained damage uh, it's fairly decent. I think, I believe I'm 9... 945 eye level in this set. Uh, and then I just noticed that it's 5 minutes coming up, so I just use first to and close it out. If you look at the damage breakdown, for a moment of clarity, Shred is going to be top. Versus Bite gets a huge mention as well. Um, 
Very good bash me isn't rip. Rip still does more damage per class than first spot because you gotta take into account the rip Ash Maze frenzy and bloody gash component. So you can see here, rip is about rip and Ash Maze rip is about 18, 18 and a half 10% of that would be 2% damage. It's roughly right. Um, not 2%, yeah. Yeah, I think that's about right. I think it should be a bit higher to take into account crit. So maybe 2.6%. But 2.3 seems sounds about right. It also... Okay, no, I think, I, I think that's, that's it for this video. I think I just walk away from the dummy now. Yeah, I just have a look over. So, 38 first spike casts in 5 minutes. Compared to 14 casts of rip. So you actually cast first spike as your dominant finisher here. Savage Drive would have cast even less. Alright, so next playlist. So Savage Draw with BT is... That's the uh, higher IQ uh, gameplay. What I've actually done is I made a weak aura. So I, I thought about this. I was like, okay, so you get the proc. Uh, actually, no, I just, I just start and then I'll, I'll show you when I get to it. I actually ignored the PS at the start, which is bad as well. I just, I'm just used to not getting it. So here I open with Savage Raw into, so I rake into Savage Raw into Ash Mane's Frenzy because you get the um, Blood Talons buff, into Tiger's Fury, uh, Tiger's Fury, Incarn, Shred, that's automatic guaranteed 5 coin points into Rip, and then either Bite or Savage Raw depending on the Savage Raw timer. Uh, I think I used a draw because it, it was a low, low timer into a refreshed double bleed. Refresh, this is what I'm doing here. So that's one bleed, second bleed. And I think as you know from tier 20, um, this might change, but you don't use blood talons if you're not refreshing a bleed in Incarn because one shred is better than 20% of um, a shred in first spike. And I believe it's about equal to 20% of two ferocious bites, but you get more comp points from the shred. So the shred, just just ignoring the blood talents would, would be better than that scenario. Right, anyway, here we go. So I actually slip up here. Okay. So I made a require if you have at least three comp points, you should cast a regress. So here, I'll tell you why it makes sense. So if I cast the regrowth here, I get two charges of blood talons, I use my next ability, which is probably shred, then I cast my first my free ferocious bite, I get I'll get um, another charge of predatory swiftness, which I should cast instantly. And so I'm not wasting any uh, blood talon charges. So this is if I'm at four con points, it's guaranteed, it's a no-brainer, it's, it's it's what you should do. But if you're at three comp points, the question is, do you use the same strategy? Uh, because your next uh, generator might not crit. And I think most of the time it is because there's only a 20% chance of failure here. And otherwise you'll, you'll waste the blood talons and you'll probably, uh, one of the two blood talons and, um, and I'll, I'll show you later if, if that happens. And also you, you might energy cap. So there's a problem with energy capping as well. If you cast ferocious bite, blood talons, ferocious bite. Um, and it's, it just feels weird. Um, and maybe Blizzard will fix the interaction and then we won't have to worry about this. But for now, I just made a weak order to remind myself. And uh, it's still hard for me to break out of the habit. So here I, I cast, here I do it wrong, right? So I should have cast Blood Talons 1 GCD earlier, before. So I'm going to get my free one. Now I've got one hanging Blood Talons. I just use it with Shred, um, but I wouldn't have had to. Then I cast my Blood Talons, 
and then I use my whatever, whichever finish I was going to use, which is ripped in this case. So this is very, I think it's a very weird and clunky bit. Very thoughtful interaction on single target. On, on Cleave, it's it's quite nice because it gives you extra blood talents procs. And you have plenty of abilities you, you do want to cast blood talents on. So here's the next proc. So here, I was on two golden points and I crit to four. So here I should definitely cast this blood talents. See, and that's perfect. And then there'll be a bit of cappage because I'm casting that blood talents. And then I cast whichever finish I wanted to cast, which in this case was first spot. And then I had one charge of blood talents left over and I can instantly go into the rank. So that looks, that looks better. It looks like what you should be doing. So here, it propped before I had time to react, so I've cast a rip. And like I said, you don't get procs that often, so it's, it really comes down to what's my next finish, my next uh, finish order what I do. So here, I've, I've cast straight up, my four going points, and here I should, uh, my weekly call has popped up and I should cast, which I do, which is great. So it, it's not, because you're running uh, Solid Arch Druid, it's not just free damage that you push, it actually gives you energy as well. So you see me, I, I come close and I even cut when I when these procs come up, because I'm used to pulling, you know, three quarters of the way up, and then I, I get this prop, I'm like, oh crap, I actually can't spend energy. And if I actually push my first just by it, it'll, it'll, it'll cut me. Not, not understanding uh, that I also have to cast Blood Talons, which is another GCD. Um, which I might not be ready for. So I think the amount you want to pull is probably going to be a, a bit lower. So here I'm using the... Uh, I, think I, I think I was trying to do the strategy where you put the first spot inside the tag tree and then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Here's a pretty lucky, you know, another proc straight after I used that other one. So here's here's another example of me where I should have used Predatory Swiftness but I didn't. And I think oh this is when the game was lagging as well. So I was trying to I was trying to mash free and it wouldn't work. And that's why that's why my rip failed as well. Yeah. So that, I think that was probably what I wanted to do. You notice all my damage on my finish is going to be a lot higher than Memory Clarity. And Rake as well. So actually, I completely erased all the energy from the tag three because I wasn't anticipating it. Because I'm trying to keep this rotation, uh, the, the time is fairly tight. So just there, that was, uh, where's my timer? So, if you look at this, I should cast first Spite immediately, but I'm like, uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, oh, what do I do with this? So I just, I actually just wasted time there. And then when I, I could have, I could have energy capped if I did a bit slower. So I think there's a bit of recognition I have to work on where, I, if I'm in that scenario, I should first spite immediately, which I didn't do. So here, I let the rake drop off because I'm going to use the incarn rake. I think that's pretty straightforward. And then I just mash. I only cast um, Predatory Swiftness when I'm going to use the Bleed Refresh, which is here. And so, here, you might question. Let's go back here. Okay, so you might question why don't I use Predatory Swiftness here and 
that was actually something that was going through my mind when I was doing, uh, when I was playing with this beforehand. Uh, this one, this, the answer for this one is pretty simple, but why didn't I cast uh, Blood Talons and then first buy it twice in a row? And that's because I looked at the time and I thought, oh, I'm kind of in the middle of a GCD here, I may not have time, so I didn't do it. But, I th but if I did do it, then I would go Predatory Swiftness, first buy it twice, and then, so that would give me 40% damage of a first bite. And then I would have missed out on a shred because the shred would be my third GCD. And the shred would have put me at two crown points. So that's why I don't think it's worth it because you would have missed out on the crown points. You miss out on the chance of Ash Marine's uh, rip, which I mean, I have in this case, but you might always have. And see, if I was behind in the crown point, with that shred crown point, my attack is really would have fallen off, which means, you know, that is potentially another 15% on our first bite. So it actually just doesn't make sense doing it. Especially if you're running with behemoths. Anyway. Maybe Sims will say I'm wrong later, and then we can adjust. But it, it does come down to what's the final implementation going to be, because that... The current... The current build is a bit erk. So I wish I day I shouldn't have. Um, this is sort of like again because I was definitely trying to cast regrowth here. Anyway. And then that's just a mess up because of the lag. That that shouldn't happen. Ignore this next section. It's not, not very good. I wouldn't say it's good quality play. I think that rip was a bit high. So if you go back. I think I did a safety. So just then I just did a safety refresh, which I shouldn't have done because I had I was full bar with six seconds. I could have actually first first to spite first. I already have Ashmeen's frenzy uh, Ashmeen's rip up, so I don't need to refresh it. I should have cast first to spite followed by rip instead of rip followed by first to spite. So that was that's not good. So the weak core pops up, this is the correct use. And now I'm thinking, okay, do I want to go through it? How do I want to do this? So I always need to cap there, because it takes me too long to decide. Because all I was deciding there is, do I first spite and rip, or first spite and first spite? And I think I made the correct decision here, because Tiger Spirit is coming up. I also noticed in this video, I only get every second rake with the Tiger Spirit instead of... 75% of them. I think that issue is because I personally don't like the, the over-raking shenanigans. I, I, I'm i okay with it for rip. Anyway, personally I don't do that, but to fix that I should have just done an over-rake at the, almost pretty much at the start to fix that, but anyway, that's, that's another issue that's not really in the vein of tier 21. I think this is the end of the video, just wrapping up. There it is. Alright, you can see it, this is fairly competitive damage as well. You can see the, the rip damage is doing more than first spike. The rate damage is a lot higher because you're getting 20% um, extra damage on basically all your rakes from Blood Talons instead of getting extra quantity of shreds and you know, an extra 20% damage on your shreds from Moment of Clarity. So, the number of rakes you cast in both, both these 5 minute videos is about the same, but the rake in this one does more damage. Which is, I think it's fairly edited. Um, Blood Talons, in my opinion, is going to be better, because when you introduce more targets, you have more high value uh, ability. So Shred is a low, low value ability, uh, if you think about it, in terms of damage per cast. Um, yeah, you'll just be able to get more finishes. So I have more Blood Talons procs. It's kind of like when you had the boots, the legendary boots, Blood Talons. 
with this free uh, versus bite proc, I'm going to get more blood talons procs than I can use that I need to than I than I need to use. So normally you need to use them on all your finishes and rank, right? And uh, and when you and, and then the excess ones get dumped on shred. But uh, in this case, when I introduce another target, I can probably use the extra blood talons on a rake and a rip on a second target, which is higher value than I would have used uh, on a first spike or a shred, which is, is what Mock is, is, is saying. Anyway, um, and you can also use it on a brutal slash if you run that. So I think that wraps up my video. There's not really much else I want to cover. Um, obviously, this is all subject to simming and trying to figure out a smart way to simulate all the nitty gritty because I mean and it also depends on the implementation of the four set bonus whether they do end up fixing it so that you can class it with zero quite points because that makes a big difference um, and if they make the behemoths and the um, predatory swiftness change to always five points because if, if that's the case then you can class first spike when you have one common point. You just you just always save uh, predatory surface. You just bang it out straight away. Then you class first spike. So that's that would be the easy easier play style if if they change it. But if they don't, if they leave it as it is now, and um, they may or may not, depending on how they want to balance this, um, then yeah, there's definitely a lot of tight situations which you'd have to create very specific rules for when you actually sim. Because um, conceptually, when you th when I'm talking about them, you can see, oh yeah, that kind of sounds like it'll work. But then we also have to test it as well through a sim, or potentially test it through a sim, um, which I'm not going to do. Someone else can do it. Uh, anyway, that wraps up the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if I have time, I'll make another video when stuff gets finalized. All right, thanks.